Welcome to our Crazy About Jesus podcast with pastors Kimpy and Lisa Womble of the Sea Church from Savannah, Georgia. This podcast is all about navigating this crazy life with a crazy love for Jesus. We are so glad you're joining us today and we'd love to hear from you. Visit theseatchurch.com slash podcast to get your question featured in our next recording. Welcome back to the Crazy About Jesus podcast. Today, we are really excited because we're doing a back to school episode. So we have Pastor Lisa here with us who has survived three children yes, Lord. who are now all adults and all serving God. She has two boys, one girl. Um, and we have her oldest here with us, Josh, sitting in on the podcast who has a three-year-old and he's braving the toddler years. And because we're talking about back to school season, we're also featuring our children's pastor, Julie Friday, whose oldest just graduated high school, now in college, also serving God. What a blessing. And she also has a middle schooler. Dun, 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 dun. (laughs) (laughs) So we're just going to start out with, do you have any pointers during this busy back to school season for parents? Well, think about you've got school, then you've got homework, you've got sports, you've got church, you've got all that kind of stuff. So my question to Pastor Julie is, is there ever a time you got to cut something out? So do you quit bringing them to Monday night student night? Do you, as long as you got them on church on Sunday, or do you not bring them to student life night and not let them go on Sundays? Or how do you balance all that out? It is a struggle. I mean, we get overwhelmed, but you cannot sacrifice the spiritual part that's going to make a difference in your child. We don't have a problem getting them to practice on time. Nope. We will do whatever it takes to get them at piano, football, whatever, but we need to be that same way about having them in the house. Well, my my question is kind of like, or I've always looked at it as if I, if I miss church or I don't get them to church, but I get them to ball practice, I get them to school, I get them to all the extracurricular activities. What am I saying to my kid? What's more important? What's more, right, that church is not as important? And, you know, you can you can get that on your own. No, not at all. <laughs> they need to be in church. I, I have an instance where um, Caleb played multiple sports and he played on a rec team and he made the decision because church has always been put first when he had to miss one time, they had to be at practice or whatever. I never said a word. Kempy never said a word. Caleb goes to his coach and says, Coach, I'm sorry, but church comes first. I'll be here as soon as church is over, but I'm going to church first, and then I'll come straight to the ball game." He got punished for that by his coach. It was, it was amazing to me that he was not late for the game. He got there on time. But two people, other people came late that didn't go to church first. They were fine. They got to play in the game, but he got set on the bench. And uh, I watched to see what his reaction was going to be. He didn't care. He didn't care. God came first. But the cool thing is that that's that's because that was already instilled in him. Um, I know Pastor Julie can attest to this, that children, um, they they hear and they see. They hear what you say, but they see what you do. Exactly. And if the two don't go together, it causes confusion in the kid. And they're going to more lean to what you do. Than what you say. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think that's Our why actions. we never had to say anything to him because he saw that church was the imp- important to us. Now, this is before we were pastoring. So it's not like I had to be at church because I was the pastor. <laughs> it was, we, we were volunteers, but we were here. Church was first. So this might be a stupid question, but this just popped in my head because you're saying like, there's an immediate consequence. Like as parents, if we don't get them to the game or we don't get them to practice, there's a consequence. Yes. Like they they'll have to sit on the bench or if we don't get them to school, there's a consequence there with their grades or whatever. Can you talk a little bit about, it might not be an immediate consequence, but what's the consequence of compromising when it comes to church, to not bringing them here? Oh my goodness. I mean, not having them under the anointing with um, the word being taught, knowing that you can have fun and be a Christian, um, it's crucial. And yes, it's a sacrifice at time, but would I rather sacrifice my time or um, my schedule or whatever for my child to have somebody pour into them life? Absolutely. And to have good friends for fellowship or whatever, fun. They have mm-hmm. fun here in the house. My kids want it, want to be here. Mm-hmm. When Landon had football, he came disgusting, nasty. 
He would come, go in the bathroom, change his shirt, put some deodorant on, <laughs> and come back out because he wanted to be here. And I love the fact that my kid wants to be at church. Okay. Now, does that mean if my child doesn't want to go to church, I don't send them? Nope. Does my child <laughs> always want to go to school? No. But that's where they're going to learn. Well, I mm-hmm. want them to learn from the things of the Lord. So I want them here at church. Well, I think the other part of that, too, is we don't just babysit here. Um, the, the kids are taught. They're taught who God is. They're taught that God loves them, that God cares about them, that he is their best friend. So they learn from nursery all the way up. They're learning and instilling this in them over and over again. I know in kids' world, they're taught they can pray. They can be filled with the Holy Spirit. They That's can true. lay hands on people and be healed. So you're instilling that in them at such a young age that God is so real to them. He, he's, not, he's not the God of my mom and dad. He's mine. He's my God. And so when you get them to those teenage years and you get them a little bit older, even if they try to stray a little while, little while, the reality of it is still that they know that God's real. And and so you've got a better job of protecting them. So you, so I have watched so many parents who didn't do that, who didn't who didn't put God first or put church first, and their children are adults and they don't serve God. And so you don't may not see. Oh, here's the other thing: it's like when they're really little and their toddlers, man, you've got great control. It's all that um, you think the terrible twos are the hardest years. That's a piece of cake <laughs> oh because somehow you still have control. But when they become teenagers and you give them a set of car keys, you've lost control. So what you did to them in their younger years by having them in the house and instilling that God is is good and all that stuff in them younger. It helps them make, makes them stronger so they can make better decisions as, as teenagers. Three of the things that we teach in um, Seed Kids, obviously when they're small, the, the focus is God made me, God loves me, and Jesus wants to be your best friend. When they get a little older, we talk about wisdom, how to make wise choices. Our kids need to make wise choices because the world is after them. Yep. They are full of um what the, the music they listen to, um, social media, um, what other people are talking about at school. They're hearing all what we watch. All these things are filling our kids' um, minds. So when the, what they get, obviously, hopefully at home, as well as at church, that should hold value mm-hmm. and should be speaking life into them. So in um, Seed Kids, it's wisdom. It's um, how to be a good friend, treat others the way you want to be treated, and um, to grow in the knowledge of Jesus and um, to know your purpose, the plan and purpose that God has for me and um, that nothing's too big for him and that he loves me no matter what. That is so cool and so valuable. One of the things that cracks me up all the time is everybody says when it comes to church, I don't want to brainwash my child or push religion on them because then they won't appreciate it. They won't want to serve God when they're older. Really? What do you think the world is doing to your kid in school? They're Mm -hmm. brainwashing them to the world's point of view. If I don't counteract that with God's word Mm -hmm. and what God's point of view is and what God says about certain things, how are they going to have enough to even fight what the world's trying to do them? So am I brainwashing my children? Yes, absolutely. (laughs) I am washing washing their brain. Yes, I'm washing them with the word of God. Mm -hmm. But every parent who instills their values in their children are doing the same thing. We're just in, instilling the, our values, which is God, into our children. Um, but, you know, I know Josh don't want to talk on the thing, but, I mean, even in his wild days, and Michael, you can attest to, in, in, in making some not-so-wise decisions well. as teenagers, <laughs> I mean, did not some of the things that you were taught as a child stay in the back of your mind the whole time? Yeah. I mean, you never doubted did that God you was real. so I wouldn't, well, I would have to talk? Yeah, <laughs> I did. Yeah, it it definitely did. I mean, you knew when you were doing wrong. I didn't know. I'm just kidding. When I, was <laughs> out <of you. laughs> I knew that was coming. Yeah, I know. You know. Well, I mean, you know. it was. It's not so much as knowing that you do what you what you did was wrong. It's that. Um, and I'm. I what meaning. I'm meaning more like of you still knew in the back of your mind that God was there. Oh yeah, and that God was real. You know? There was a desire to serve God. You know, still. still and please God still. Mm-hmm. And the reason you knew it was wrong is because you knew you were grieving God when you did it. You know, like, right. 
the whole time. It wasn't so much that your parents cared. It was that. Or <laughs> if you got into a situation where you, you needed need God, <laughs> <laughs> you knew you could immediately ask him. <laughs> That's really what it is. I can, I can remember one time um, I was asking Josh something, and he, and he said to me, he's like, Mom, y'all weren't bad parents. Y'all raised me right. He said, um, I know the Bible better than most people that go to church know the Bible. I'm just making these decisions because I want to, you know, but it's just, that's when you're like, okay, I don't have anything to counteract that with. Can I just <laughs> knock him upside the head right now? Knocking your yeah. children upside the head is not going to get them back. But yeah. you know what it does is prayer. You stay on your knees for your kids and you trust that God's going to move. And, and I love what Dr. Ekajuba said to me one time. He said, the seed of the righteous will never be lost. So if you're struggling with a kid right now that doesn't want to come to church or doesn't want to serve God, you need to stand on that. The seed Amen. of the righteous will not be lost. That's my seed. And they can't be lost. That's so good. That's, that, that's what sustained me. Mm-hmm. Is knowing my kid didn't have a choice. He has to serve God. The, the inheritance is too great. He has to serve God. All of my kids have to serve God. Don't you agree? Like, yes, 100%. <laughs> and you say now. it all the time. Yes, all the time. I want to fight for my kids. Yeah. When you were talking about um, what, you know, the school pouring into brainwashing them, basically, because they're at school for what? It's 40 hours hours. a week, right? Or even more than that. Mm -hmm. And I just remember thinking, I know when I was a teenager, too, like what your friends are doing around you. It's like they create your normal. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, yes. do you want your kids' peers or what they're getting at school to be what's normal and what they're supposed to do? And Absolutely act like? not. Yeah. And if you're not, like you said, when you come to church, that's only, you You know the number. Julie has this app that's like 52 weeks and until, or, you know, until they graduate, whatever. But you it's only have. It's 936 weeks from the time your child is born till when they graduate from high school. So you have 936 weeks to pour into that child. But of that school gets so many more days. Exactly. So it's like, don't miss. Well, it's like church. Don't we have church. approximately 104 to 120. That is if, if you're there, if the families are here every single Sunday. Um, so it's limited time, but like pastor said, we're not here to babysit. We're in partnership with our, the parents. Right, yeah. We want to take those hour and, 120 hours that we have them and pour and pray over them and speak life into them and teach them what, what God says about them. But, and speaking of that, because of technology and because of TV and because of everything else that we have to distract from that home time is not where it used to be. So parent, we're not sitting around the dinner table and talking and we're not doing all those kind of things. And, and we, we've instituted that in my family this year. And I think it's been probably the best thing we've ever done. And even though it's not perfect every single time, we're getting to the routine of this is family time's important. And we, if you've got grandparents, bring them around to pour into these kids and to talk about old times and talk about the things of God and talk about spiritual things. I know one thing that I've always admired about Julie and them is they make dinner time an important time. And there is no TV. There is no phones. There's none of that because they're talking. Now, Pastor Julie and Pastor Kempe have um, amazing abilities to interrogate you and get stuff out <laughs> of brother you and sister that family. not every parent gets to do. <laughs> but but we've got to learn. Like I think she just shared on Facebook some really good questions to ask your kid after school. You know, but we've got to open that dialogue back so kids feel free to talk to us. And and um, Josh just shared an article with me about um, technology and and even technology during family time causes bad behavior. So can you, you know, talk a little bit about some of that stuff? Um, the social media aspect of it. Um, it's pulling everybody away from having any kind of eye to eye contact mm-hmm. communication. Um, I know Michael has lots to say about this um, topic as well. So does Josh. <laughs> they all are as passionate about it, I think, as as me, but, um, we can't be, um, a a peer pressure. Our parents have peer pressure. Everybody's, you know, your kid comes home and mom, everybody has this app. Everybody Mm -hmm. has, um, this social media. Well, it doesn't matter that everybody has it. What's right for your family. Mm -hmm. What's right for you, you know, and that's why it's important to, to be praying for your kids because you'll know what's right. And sometimes it's trial and error. Yeah. Um, but I'd rather, um, you know, caution on a little bit, 
too strict on that, then just give them full reign. Absolutely. For sure. Michael, do you have something? I'm just thinking about, like we were saying, like your friends talking about how your friends become your normal. Well, now it's times like 10. Like it used to be yeah. because your friends go with you everywhere you go. So um, there's so many articles and stuff that we've read, and I'm going to butcher this, but basically remember that one we talked about, would you drop your child off at a warehouse completely filled with the most inappropriate behavior going on. They can't be seen. Nobody knows they're there, but they can hear and witness everything, everything. that's happening. Would you ever drop your kid off at this warehouse? That, of, your all first the stuff answer is no. Absolutely no, you not. wouldn't. But when you have, when you don't have boundaries, strict boundaries, that's what you're doing on because it. they have access the mm-hmm. to everything. Yeah. With their phone. And well, I mean, just some simple key things. If you don't really know about technology is at, at whatever time you decide eight o'clock at night, nine o'clock at night, whatever that phone gets taken out of that kid's house, out of that kid's bedroom or out of that kid's hand. And it goes in the room where the parents are. You can't plug it up in the kitchen. I can remember when computers first were in the home and stuff. I'm like, Oh, I'm going to protect my kid. It's going to be in the kitchen where I can watch them, where I can see them. Well, I go to bed at night, and my bedroom was on the opposite side of the house. They mm-hmm. could get up in the middle of the night and go in the kitchen to the computer and see stuff they shouldn't see. Mm-hmm. Okay, no, so that's not right. So kids shouldn't have their, their phones in their room. Absolutely. Plus, they've also proven how it interrupts their sleep time, all of that kind of stuff. It needs to be taken out of the room. So that's a simple thing parents can do to try to help protect their kids. There's there's other apps on there where you can actually have it connected to your children, so whatever sites they go to, all of that. And we can share a lot of this information we with sure you can. later. Um, one of the things that I did, um, I was just thinking about as Julie was talking, that one of the things that you do wrong sometimes as a parent is, number one, let them be alone too much. You know, especially now that everybody's got a TV in their bedroom or you got that or they're playing video games or whatever. The kids in one room and the parents are in the other room and there's not any talk yeah. whatsoever. Well, that's where the enemy can talk to them the most is when they're alone. So, mm-hmm. you know, they'll send you to your room. You know, whatever. That's that's the worst thing you can do. And it's so tempting, I'm sure, because, like, you've had a long day at work. You're tired. And it's like a pacifier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it keeps them out of your hair. So don't don't do that. Get involved in their life. Don't worry. Oh, the the other thing I was going to say is, you know, um, I was never the perfect housekeeper. And so there's a lot of times that they want to invite friends over. And I would like, no, 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 because the house ain't clean or whatever. Don't worry about your house. Kids that are coming over are not caring what your house looks like. Well, would you rather your kids be at your house so you you see what's happening or being at somebody else's house? My house. So you want the kids at your house. So either Mm -hmm. suck it up and clean your house a little bit better or don't care how your house looks. Right. But let let your house be the house that people want to hang out at. Because then at least you know what's going on. Something I said to, I think, Michael and Pastor Lisa recently is that I think that it's just as important for you as parents to be actively involved in your child's life as a teenager Absolutely. Preteen, as much as it, when they're a toddler, mm-hmm. um, the need is different, but in in some ways, but they need you to be there, present, not always gone, them not always alone in their bedroom, um, even though they say that's where they want to be. Um, they really want time with family. Mm-hmm. My my kids love when we do game night, and Pastor Lisa mentioned um, us around the table. We have this to get the discussion talking, everybody uh, going. Um, what's the best part of your day? What's the worst part of your day? And you can't say coming home, school being out. We want to know two things that happen at school or during school, you know, was the highlight and maybe not so great. Um, and through that, we have learned so much about our kids and also some things that we needed to have um, bring attention to us about their teacher or what was happening at school. So um, make time for fun with your kids. Yeah. Not watching TV but having fun. And sometimes it's just your presence. Just right. being there, you know, sitting beside them or whatever. It's, it's being in present with them. I'm sure that we could, are we, are we I'm sure we we could talk about this probably. Can for I say hours. one more thing? Yes. That's what I was okay, going to ask. Sorry. Any last things to add? Um, I'm just getting warmed up here. <laughs> I know. I know it's hard. <laughs> um, this is something that the Lord's been dealing with me about is, um, 
it's easy for us to magnify the negative. Mm -hmm. We all see the things that irritate us about our kids or what they're doing wrong. And when that happens, we can just go crazy or we can just harp or whatever. But let's switch it up and let's celebrate big the things they're doing right. Yeah. And maybe there's potential that you see. Maybe, you know, praise those little things that you see um, because that's what's going to bring life to them. That's what's going to um, give them hope that, hey, I did something right. Because if we're always harping on them, um, it kind of shuts them down. So um, just wanted to add that. Celebrate big um, the things that they're, they're good behaviors, good grades. The second part of that, Julie taught me this, is that when they're telling you something that is bad, or they're telling you something that, that don't react right away. Just listen, because the more you listen, the more they'll talk. If you just react automatically back to them, they're going to shut down. She must have told so, you that after I grew She up. did. It was after you grew up. So that, that that's, what, that's the other thing I didn't do well, but I'm learning. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace yes, and your mercy amen. on the things that yes. I did not do well, that you took up the slack and my kids turned out good. We're not perfect. Parents are not perfect. No. And we need help. We need each other. We need help. And we need God. I have a two-year-old. I already need help. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to come to us and say, hey, I need help with this. Listen, your kid's not the only kid that's ever done anything. And Mm -hmm. there's nothing that is, that is like, going to shock us. We're here to help. We're here to partner with you as a parent. And give you everything that we can share with you to help. And speaking of that, if you need help on any, you know, any level and you want to ask some questions, maybe for our next podcast, we have some awesome parents in the house who can give you a wealth of knowledge. Um, from, they've been there. They've done that. So please feel free to, to ask any questions. You can go to the seedchurch.com crazy about Jesus podcast blog and we'll post a link for any questions that you want to ask. And this is uncut. Right? That's why we have sounds going off in the background. But it'd be cool. We could do a part two with this and, and with your okay. questions, so that'd be cool. And also, we'll post. We didn't get a chance to really talk about some resources, so we can put some of those up on Absolutely. the blog, too. So check it out, and we'll talk next week. Thanks. <laughs>